Hi, I'm Martin Smith, and I'm here at Shosh Vineyards uh, talking about what size bush hog to get with a tractor. This one here, my dad bought it when I was 11 years old. We had a 44 horsepower Ford 4000 Industrial, and I thought I was really hot stuff with this thing. I could rev that thing up and take down a 3 inch tree without too much of a problem. Uh, over time, I learned to uh, wear a helmet and a jacket with it because it kicked out very large chunks, especially if it hit a rock. And yeah, they will go through rocks pretty well, but it will also uh, tear up the edges of the blades. And there's not much use of sharpening them. It's really, really hard to sharpen them. Uh, they do take a heavy beating. Uh, this one here is, what, about... 35 years old. About the only thing good on it is the gearbox and the wheel. As you can see, everything else is pretty much trash. Even this piece up here has been bent, and I wasn't the one to do that one. Uh, anyhow, the four foot uh, was eventually replaced with a five foot, and thankfully that one was replaced with a six foot for 44 horsepower. You really want a six foot, you can always slow down, but you need that width to uh, get around the wheels and to get up next to a fence. Uh, if you're going smaller than, uh, you're really wanting something the size of your wheelbase. And like I said, that is so that you can mow up against fences. The other issue is uh, I just bought a 10 foot with a, uh, on the back of a 76 horsepower tractor and it was a it, it wasn't on a three-point hitch it was more of a trailer type and when I found when I turned uh, it really ate up the joints and they finally broke and I decided I was going to make a three-point hitch on it that way I can back it up into places that I couldn't get to before so if you're getting a pull behind uh, do lots of mowing before you do so because the pull behinds are really terrible things to have. And right here we have probably the finest lawn mowers God ever invented. They're called hair sheep. Not only do they mow the lawn, they fertilize behind them. And at the end of their lifetime, rather than having to trade it in and buy another one, they taste good. So this one here, one of the advantages of it, other than the fact that it's a Woods, which is a fantastic brand name, uh, it has belt drive on it. So what the belt drive does is when you hit something, it takes the shock out of it, and that saves your gearbox, and it saves your gears in the tractor. So if you can find one with a belt drive, it's worth twice that of any of them with all the gearboxes in the world on top of them. So you want as few gearboxes as possible because all it takes is uh, one gearbox to go out and the whole thing's pretty well finished. And uh, you're also wanting belt drive if you can get it. The other thing, uh, if you're doing one where it's a three-point hitch, you want something uh, where if you go into a ditch and this the mower deck gets lifted up, what can happen is they actually have, the mower deck can actually have enough force to pull your back wheels off the ground so that you can't get out of the ditch unless you have four wheel drive. Not only that, but it can also bend this bar, it can bend uh, all your equipment. So when you're buying something, you either want a slip hitch in here, you want a chain from here to your tractor, or you want a chain from here, as I hook this one up, to the end of your mower. That way, when things get tight, that mower can just lift up. And we have the mowing crew right there. Okay, to go over this again, uh, I did a chain from the back end all the way to my stand that I built. And the other thing that I did over here, we have the PTO shaft, which hooks up to the back of the tractor. And I just welded that shaft onto the broken piece. Got rid of the extension. 
and make sure that you have one of these on it. This is a slip spot so that it can extend and contract as it moves around. And the rest is just a matter of hooking it up to a three-point hitch. And I did it quite a bit of ways from the back tires. And hindsight being what it is, I probably should have shortened it another four inches. But it is what it is, and it works pretty good. Okay, the other thing to know when you're buying it, saying, oh, I, I want the biggest one I can get. Uh, this tractor right here is 76 horsepower. It's a uh, Massey Ferguson 275 and it barely pulls a 10-foot mower. And as they get older, they pull less and less. So it might have 75 horsepower, but you cannot run 75 horsepower all day long. What will happen is what happened to me on this one. It was turning sideways a little bit, and when I stopped the engine, I mowed uh, two acres in about 45 minutes, and the grass was about a foot to a foot and a half high, pretty thick. And when I was done, the, uh, the radiator pretty much overfilled. I mean, it, it was blowing out. It overheated the engine pretty badly. So you have to be careful on that. Uh, like I say, if you have a six foot, that is perfect for 40 horsepower. If you have 35 and under, you might want to consider a five, five foot or go with the same width of your wheelbase.